And thanks very much to the Lithuanian Presidency for organizing this uh, excellent event. It's actually the first time that I'm in the annual forum, and I'm not a veteran like <laughs> Henrika there. Um, well, ladies and gentlemen, the topic of this annual forum is Baltic growth and environment, and I think it's very timely. Parts of the Baltic Sea region, not least Lithuania, have been particularly hard hit by several years of financial crisis. I'm sure the Minister of Finance knows this, of course. <laughs> but recovery has also been faster than in most other regions of Europe. We can now see that unemployment is going down. There are more jobs created here, as well as in Estonia and Latvia, for instance, where the situation is still very serious elsewhere in Europe. And this is very much thanks to reforms, tough reforms and very hard work. Economic growth in every single member state around the Baltic Sea region is, however, strongly dependent on the growth in the EU at large. When the EU economy grows, the Baltic Sea region prospers, and when the EU suffers, our region will also be affected, because this is because we are so much dependent on trade, and that goes specifically, specifically also for my own country. The Baltic Sea region is an innovative region. This is also evident from the list of innovative projects. This is a true source for inspiration, this list. Just let me draw a couple of examples. The March Chain project of the flagship project Baltic Sea Stardust has developed a concept for smaller lightweight ferries, electric ferries, with zero em emissions. It would not only make smaller ferries an attractive complement to public transport in cities around the region, but also it could contribute to lifting goods off roads and strengthen short sea, short sea shipping in the Baltic in a very sustainable way. The beauty of this project, and many others, is of course that it delivers to and relies on all of the three objectives of the Baltic Sea strategy. Saving the sea, connecting the region, and increase, increasing prosperity. And these are objectives that are so much interlinked. Another good example of the innovative Baltic Sea region is the flagship project Mona Lisa. They have developed a new model for route planning that will improve efficiency in maritime transport, optimizing consumption and thereby reducing emissions from shipping, and at the same time improving safety at sea considerably. The list of this kind of su successful projects is quite long. But we should also remember that the Baltic Sea strategy is not just about listing projects. It's about having our needs better heard in Brussels, in the European Union. It's about making the best of our membership, of our respective memberships in the European Union, it's about having all levels of society helping to achieve these objectives. And I can also underline the need for more local involvement, just like Enrica mentioned. <clears throat> but if we are to succeed, we also need to make maximum use and sharpen the tools that we have at our disposal through the European Union. Just a few examples there. The single market. The Baltic Sea region should become a pioneer when it comes to trade in services, also in digital services. We should cooperate closely to remove the barriers that still exist and still makes this region eight different markets. We should make it into one market. Free movement of people. Passport controls and checks are history in this region since a few years back. We should stimulate our citizens to work and study and travel across the region. When this right is currently put into question in parts of Europe, we need to stand up for this cornerstone of European integration that helps us to connect our region and connect it with the rest of Europe. And also common funds and legislation. We share the same EU laws and regulations across the board, which make cooperation so much easier. The maritime policy is one example. And we have European funds at our disposal that can facilitate projects, cohesion, and further integration. And now it's up to us to make sure that they can help out to meet the objectives that we, that we have set up for the strategy. Some people claim that progress is slow with the strategy, that there is a lack of political commitment Member states are not assuming their responsibility. Well, I'm not entirely convinced about this statement. The Swedish government has just delivered, delivered a second report to Parliament on the Swedish implementation of the strategy. It's an overview of the various activities in Sweden emanating from this strategy. We have commissioned no less than 36 national agencies to incorporate the strategy into their field of responsibility and their daily work, and to annually report to the government on the progress made. The same goes for all the 21 county administrations in Sweden. All these and related activities are coordinated by our agency for economic and regional growth. This actually is actually a polit political commitment to put into effect. 
And the report also shows that Sweden is assuming a substantial share of responsibility in implementing the strategy. We have partners that are participating as coordinator in five out of 17 priority areas. Swedish partners are managing or participating in the management of more than 30 flagship projects, and I'm, of course, very proud of that. But we also have some suggestions for further action. One is to explore cooperation mechanisms in order to achieve the overall EU target of 20% share of renewable energy resources, thus contributing to the objectives of combating climate change. We also think the strategy should link fisheries policy more to related policies like tourism and rural development. There we have the blue growth. Uh, the link between increased prosperity and gender equality is another area which needs to be developed and addressed in a macro-regional context. Today, only 62% of the women in the Baltic Sea region are in employment, where 75% is the figures for men. Equal participation of women and men in the labor markets by 2020 would raise, would raise our economic growth considerably, by some estimates about 12%, and this is a key driver for economic growth. This is why Sweden and Poland has jointly proposed a new exciting flagship project called Baltic Sea Regional Partnership Platform for Gender Equality and Sustainable Development. We're also arguing for a more integrated approach to funds. Rural development funds could be used more efficiently in many member states to address the objective of saving the sea. Fisheries funds should not be used to increase capacity in a situation where we already have overcapacity for fishing. I think the key issue now, and that has already been said by many, is to broaden the horizons for crucial funds, such as the operational programs of the structural and investments funds, which make up a large part of the EU budget, which is now soon to be adopted. Um, so, mainstream the strategy into programming of funds. We have a unique opportunity with the Common Financial Framework. Ladies and gentlemen, we are all aware that we face a number of challenges in this region. We need to make great efforts, continue to do that, to save the sea, to connect the region and increase prosperity, and become this creative, innovative, and competitive corner of Europe that we're all talking about. The strategy that we're all involved in is one important means to do this. Member states can certainly do more, and I, but I think we are on track. Still, it's important to remember that we prove our commitment by actual implementation and what we actually do, and not yet by another political declaration, of course. Thank you for listening.